Well, welcome to my spoil board video, guys. This is a brief video on how I created my 4x4 spoil board from my Avid CNC. As you can see, the base layer of this spoil board is nothing more than the Avid file that uh, is included or that they tell you how to create uh, in their instructions, and it's bolted to the 8020 aluminum. You can see a bunch of uh, strips that I've also cut on my table saw. They're four inches in width and to the same width of the, uh, or to the same length, I should say, of the uh, MDF underneath, which I believe was 49 inches. Uh, and I'm just basically laying them out on the surface and getting a rough idea. Most of them were four inches in width, uh, starting from the, uh, the front of the machine working back. And then the last one I had to adjust a little bit. It wasn't quite four inches in width. I think it was three inches uh, in something, but no, not a big deal. Seldom do I ever work on the back of the machine or at the time that I foresee working uh, on the back of the machine. Um, I'm using some T-Track that I purchased on Amazon. Um, there's a whole bunch of, uh, I well, actually, I think I got that from Rockler, uh, now that I think about it. And I'm doing nothing more than kind of just laying the uh, pieces of the MDF out with the T-Track and spacing them all out and kind of getting a rough idea of where everything is going to lay. Um, pretty basic. I'm just kind of moving things around and positioning things the way I want it. Um, there's a side view of, of how I'm doing it. And nothing's glued in place uh, as of yet. Um, I may have had, I don't remember uh, when I made this video, I may have had that front piece already glued in place by this time. Um, but you'll see me take the clamps off that front piece here shortly. And again, I'm just kind of getting the, the basic layout of how I want it to go and making sure everything's going to fit as I expect it. Um, this spoil board uh, system uh, has worked out really good for me. I started out with just the base layer of just the MDF and T-Track and then I added a bunch of dog holes to accept TSO dogs and some clamping uh, from armor clamps and Craig, some Craig clamps that I have. And I didn't include that in this video. This is just showing the basic construction of the MDF and T-Track. But the dog holes have uh, worked out really good. Here you can see a video or a clip of the clamps on there. I'm just, I've allowed that first uh, section to dry with uh, glue and I'm ready to attach that first uh, piece of T-Track and I've already attached the actual the end screws I'm just going through now and uh, getting the interior screws and I'm just using two drill two excuse me two dr drills excuse me and I'm using one to drill out the holes and then one, the red Milwaukee, to actually screw in the little, I think they're number eight screws that I ended up using. They're number eight or number six. Whatever T-Track you guys end up deciding to use on your spoil board if you choose to go this route, uh, they'll suggest the right number or the right type of screws to use when you adhere it to your uh, spoil board. I'm just vacuuming up the sawdust from the uh, the holes that I just drilled. And they don't go all the way through. They just go into the MDF a little bit, just enough to accept those screws and get a good bite. Just lay out each screw by each hole to make it easy installing. This is not complicated. It actually went a lot easier than I thought it would. I think I do one or two screws on here and then I realize that I probably should adjust the clutch on my uh, drill so I don't over tighten or under tighten so I get it just right where I need it to be and yeah they're right there I'm adjusting the clutch and just systematically go down the line and tighten each one up
This was actually a lot of fun to do. Design my own spoil board, and you don't have to do it this way. You could have your your strips. I've seen other uh, Avid owners out there have their strips run the length of the machine rather than run the width, so their T-track is going front to back instead of side to side. It works. It's just up to you. The, the spoil board possibilities are endless. And some people don't even use T-Track and a top layer of MDF. They just use the original uh, spoil board that uh, uh, Avid suggests or provides, the uh, plans that they provide. And they don't go any further than that. There's pneumatic nailers you can use. It all just depends on the application. So here you see me spreading some glue on the, the second uh, strip of MDF. And we're going to go ahead and secure that in place now that we've got our positioning for our first T-Track. And we're just going to slide that down. You can see my, uh, my jointer sitting there, my portable jointer. I was originally planning on using that as a weight to hold some of that down, and I never ended up using it. But in case you were wondering why that's sitting there, I used some of those plastic parts bins that are full of some, some bolts and all of them added together um, were kind of heavy, so I positioned them on there here shortly just to hold the MDF down in place. And I'm sliding these clamps in. These are some clamps from my Axiom setup, and I do use them from time to time on this machine, but uh, I'm just sliding them into place uh, in the T-Track that I just installed and we'll go ahead and tighten them down to hold the new newly glued MDF strip in place. And it's just a matter of going down the length of the machine along the Y axis from front to back and doing it one by one. And when one piece of MDF dries, you go ahead and you tighten down the next T-track and then you glue the next MDF piece down and you use the clamps to hold it in place and you just work your way that way towards the back of the machine. It's not something that's going to be done in an hour or two. Uh, it's going to take you a good day or two if you want to do it correctly, but uh, you're going to get some good results and it's going to work out really good in the end. And here you see me just positioning those parts bins I mentioned a moment ago to hold, kind of hold the center of that uh, MDF strip down and I'm tightening the uh, Axiom clamps down, the T-Track clamps down to uh, hold the MDF in place along the edges. And remember, once you get this in place, uh, you're going to be surfacing your spoil board. So if there's some rises and uh, some what, what I guess you would say some hills and valleys in your MDF you can get it perfectly level with your gantry and in the end that's the overall objective once you get your uh, spindle trammed correctly uh, to the gantry it will uh, cut correctly and everything will be perfect and level more on tramming later so I'm just tightening the uh, clamps down on the other side. And we'll go ahead and add uh, some additional weight on top of there with a couple more of those boxes of bolts. Actually, those are quite heavy. There's some pretty good uh, pieces of hardware in there. I'm just making sure that they're uh, sitting where I want them to sit on that MDF. And once that's dry, then we go into uh, tightening down the next T-Track. And here you can see I've abandoned the uh, bolt boxes or storage boxes, and I'm just using a couple more clamps. And uh, that ended up working out better for me. Guys, if you like this video, uh, be sure to hit the uh, like button and uh, hit subscribe on my channel and the little bell icon to be notified when I post new content. 
Uh, I don't post as regularly as I'd like to. I'm pretty busy in the shop, but I do make a faithful attempt to put stuff out there on a regular basis. So until we meet again uh, on YouTube and until the next video, cheers, be safe in the workshop, and keep those chips flying. Take care, y'all.